it still takes the right kind of person to just seize an opportunity like that because there are plenty of other yeah. people in the world who just be like oh that seems like too much i can't do that i shouldn't do that and you yeah. were just like that sounds awesome i'm doing that this is climbing gold how hard was the 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 climb itself like obviously you guys did it in a single day which was a first um Mike Schaefer and Colin Haley did the first traverse, like probably 2010, I think it was somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, like how, like how difficult it was, like some of the rock climbing looks actually quite exceptional. Some of it looks quite chossy. How did it compare to something like the, the Fitzroy massive traverse? I mean, I would say overall it was more chossy, much smaller but still quite cool than like the fit. I mean, the fifth traverse is pretty exceptional, right? Like mm -hmm. in so many ways, um, this wasn't quite that, but it was more beautiful probably. I mean, the fact that we could do it in a day, you know, kind of as a, a testament to it. it wasn't too crazy. I bet if you were to pitch it out though, it would have been like 70 pitches. So pretty big day. I don't know if it'd be quite that many, but, but it was, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought the rock quality was much better than I expected for, uh, you know, for other rock climbing I've done in Alaska, especially like when you go to the Ruth Gorge, the rock quality is horrendous. And this is like pretty good. I thought it was comparable to a lot of sort of high Sierra ridge scrambles and things like that, um, or probably better than most of the ridges in the Sierra. Um, I mean, it's not quite as good as Patagonia, maybe, but it's but it, it was awesome. I mean, I thought the climb we did was surprisingly good. And then I think the we probably climbed up to 511 ish or 11 minus. It was really hard to judge the difficulty because we hadn't like we had no calibration you know we hadn't rock climbed in forever and normally climbing 11 minus or 511 on gear should be like pretty easy you know but we're wearing backpacks we're wearing oversized shoes we're like simul climbing and you're kind of like yeah this feels fine but like is this hard is this easy and then we also we're obviously trying our best because we're kind of like this is this is our big moment like we're going for it we're doing a rad thing i mean certainly the the head wall on the devil's thumb itself uh which is the part that was probably 511 ish you know, I was like, I have no idea. Like, it wasn't that hard, but we both tried. You know, we're like, oh, we're we're climbing. Like, this is engaging. I went up and down, tried to, like, find the right way through some parts. And you're kind of like, all right, something. I mean, one thing that was surprising to us is if you read the accounts from Krakauer and stuff, it does sound like the most deadly mountain in the world. And it, actually, I think it might be, like, by the numbers, like, number of people that have climbed it versus how many people have died on it. It might be one of the most dangerous mountains in the world. But it's totally changed, like climate change has changed it it's melted out it's just like a rock plug now and i think historically it was just like covered in ice and gnarliness and that's just not the case anymore yeah it, it really felt like being in the high sierra it felt like a like a rad version of like the minaret traverse or you know like a cooler spires on the evolution traverse or like some of the famous traverses in the in the sierra nevada and like how like obviously you two have had this incredible partnership with like you know, I mean, everything from the Yosemite free triple to the no speed record, um, the Fitzroy traverse, like all that, like, where do you think it actually fit inside of like the whole, like maybe the whole adventure? Like, where did it fit inside of some of the things you guys have done together? Well, I think this is probably most like the cuddle, the big traverse that we did in, in Rocky Mountain National Park, which is probably the thing that blew out Tommy's Achilles to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, too much, too much, uh, you know, trudging around in, in Rocky Mountain. But no, I mean, I think it's it's kind of, you know, in a lot of ways, it's much easier than something like the Fitz Traverse or, or the Free Triple in Yosemite in that that anybody could do this if they were willing to try hard enough and, and put in the effort and, and sort of work for it. Because it's not like it didn't require a elite level of athleticism or anything. But it, but on the other hand, it's the biggest adventure of anything we've ever done together. You know, it's like the biggest scope, the biggest scale. It's just like it's just so much. Yeah, and there was like a lot of unknowns. There was so much toiling. It just depends how you quantify difficulty. Like if it's purely by rock climbing number grades, yeah, it wasn't that hard. But if you include all the other peripheral things, it was extremely hard. And that's kind of, I mean, honestly, that's that's all I've been able to do. My Like I'm not naturally that very good rock climber. So I do things where I just like beat my head against the wall forever. And that's how I get it done. And that was exactly what this trip felt like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the most effort we've put into anything because like the the free trip on Yosemite, you know, is a, is a great climb, but we put one week into that. You know, we showed up in Yosemite together. We did three days of prep. We took two rest days. We did the triple and we were done. We're sort of like, oh, that was a fun week of rock climbing. And 
you know, this adventure, like, I mean, we biked for six weeks before we even got to the, the, the beginning of the real trip, you know, I mean, it was just so big. Yeah. You know, I know it's sort of, I know this is like part of your jobs, right? Like, the, like the whole experience, like you guys are professional climbers. Um, but I was also thinking about like, how rad is it at this sort of stage in both your lives? You know, your dad's, you're super busy. You're doing all things that like are the other side of your job as a professional climber. You know, Tommy, your, your, your work with Patagonia, Alex, just like all the, all the things you do. Um, how awesome was it to actually get to spend two months with each other at this stage in life? Because I couldn't go to like my best friends and be like, dude, two months, like, there's, there's just, it would never happen. Like the way it is. And like, this is kind of an awesome thing that you guys one made happen. And just, I'm curious, like what that experience was like, cause it sort of seems like something out of your twenties, like, like a sort of like, what would happen if you were Taylor's age versus like, you know, being almost 40 and in your forties. I mean, to be, to be honest, that's partially why there's a TV show. I mean, because for me, it's so much easier to block that kind of like to block two months out of your life to just go climbing with your friend in the mountains, go for go for an adventure is just much easier. If you can justify it as like you're doing a work thing, you're doing a, a media project, it's like good for, you know, it's good for the professional rock climbing and whatever else. And so, you know, I mean, that that's really the sort of the reason that this this project became a film because I mean Tommy was just envisioning it as his own personal journey and I was like oh this sounds like a fun journey I'm you know it's like it'd be an incredible adventure but it's just hard to justify two months away from the family just hanging out with your buddy if it's not like for something and now in this case and now that we see the final film I'm like well thank goodness because it's like it's so cool I mean it's such a beautiful way to show Alaska to people yeah, and for me, even I, you know, I wouldn't just go for two months these days and abandon my family if it was just about a climbing trip. Like that would feel like a bad father. But you know, this was like a conservation project in the first place, so it aligned with my with my work that I do at Patagonia. And then the fact we made a film about it too just like brought all those things together. And I was like, this is hitting so many notes that we can justify it. You know, as like busy dads. Taylor's, Taylor's like, like, I'm going out. Taylor's like, I'm yeah. going on another two month trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was at the time I was working for um, I was working for this this photographer um, as like his assistant. Um, and we were running around all, all over the place doing shoots and whatnot. And, and I was like starting to get some of my own photo work. And then um, but I basically, yeah, the, the once I got the invite, I was obviously just in a place where I don't have. Yeah, I'm not parenting child you know i was at the time i was 23 and um i could easily just like drop everything and and just go with like a two weeks notice um the, the, yeah. that said it still takes the right kind of person to just seize an opportunity like that because there are plenty of other yeah. people in the world who just be like oh that seems like too much i can't do that i shouldn't do that and you yeah. were just like that sounds awesome i'm doing that mm -hmm.